Welcome to Bethel Kingdom City Church, BKCC. We are a non-denominational Pentecostal church in the heart of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We have a mandate to groom the true worshipers who will worship God in spirit and in truth. We create an environment where people are equipped to develop and maximize their potentials and to pursue intimacy with God. We constantly advance the kingdom of God, first through our circles of influence, then the nations abroad. Bethel Kingdom City Church, a place where humanity encounters divinity. Bethel Kingdom City Church, a place where the natural encounters the supernatural. Bethel Kingdom City Church, a place where destiny finds fulfillment and potentials are maximized. Bethel Kingdom City Church, grooming the true worshipers who will worship God in spirit and in truth. For more information about BKCC, visit our church's website at www.bethelkingdomcitychurch.ca or visit our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Thank you. Can you just magnify the name of Jesus tonight? That song says, Great is your name. Wonderful counselor are the works of your hand. I say, Great is your name. Let's thank God because the name of God is great. His name is great. His name is greatly to be praised. Among the God, there is no one like him. Among the king, there is none like him. He is glorious in holiness. He is fearful in praises. He is the Lord that is always doing wonders. He does wonders without numbers. Magnify the name of Jesus tonight. And say, great is your name, Jesus. Great is your name. Great is your name. Great is your name. Your name is great. His name is awesome. Among the gods, among the kings, none like him. He is glorious in holiness. He is fearful in praises. He is the Lord that does wonders without numbers. Can you just magnify the name of Jesus tonight? Lika po maranta lika shante. Lika talika po mayanta lika shanta. Raka talika po malinta lika shante. Reke talika po malika talika shanta. Raka talika po malinta lika shante. Rike talika po malika talika shanta. Raka talika po malinta shanta. Rike talika po malika talika shanta. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. Lord, we give you all adoration. There is no God like you. There is no king like you. There is no savior like you. There is no deliverer like you. Among the gods, among the kings, there is none like you. You are a faithful God. You are a kind God. You are a loving God. Thank you, Jesus, because your love endures forever. Your love endures forever. It's from everlasting to everlasting. Marika talika shente, lin talika bo, mayan talika shente. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Can you talk to God tonight and pray that the Lord will speak to you, that the Holy Spirit will minister to you as we study the Word of God. Pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you, that the Word of God will be sent to you today. The Bible says it sent His Word and it healed their diseases. Pray that the word of God we sent tonight will heal for us from every form of infirmities. The word will set us free. The word will deliver us. The word will heal us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Most of the people that Jesus Christ healed, he healed by his spoken word. He healed by his spoken word. Even the woman that touched the hem of his garment, he says, uh, his faith has made her all. So, you know, he, he spoke. And the Bible says he sent his word and healed their diseases. Say, God, send your word to me. Let it heal me from diseases in my body. Let this heal me from financial diseases. Let it heal me from spiritual diseases. Let this word heal me from every disease in my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your word liberate me. Let your word transform me. Let your word deliver me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let me live by this word. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of God's mouth. God, I pray that I will live by this word. I will live by this word. 
I will live by this word. Thank you, Father, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Father, we give you thanks and praises for tonight. Holy Spirit, minister through me in the mighty name of Jesus. I present myself as a vessel. Holy Spirit, speak to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So tonight we are looking at this subject, faith. Faith. Can somebody say faith? Faith. You know, faith is very powerful. You know, the names of some people are even faith. You know, I know someone who names the first, I think the first child is faith. The second child, I think, faithful. And the third child, faithfulness. So everything is just around faith. Faith, faithful, faithfulness. You know, faith. Faith is a very powerful word. Um, faith is a very powerful subject. And the reason why we need to study this subject is because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. <laughs> so if the word of God says without faith it is impossible to please God, then you must understand the subject of faith if you want to please God. Or else you can just be doing everything uh, that displeases Him. Because faith is a very powerful subject that if you are going to please God, you need to have faith. If you are going to receive anything in God's kingdom, you need to have faith. Faith is the currency by which we buy things in God's kingdom. We don't buy things in God's kingdom with dollar. We don't buy, you know, what we need in God's kingdom with pants telling. We don't buy it with euro. We don't buy it with naira. We don't buy it with yen. Faith is the currency by which we purchase, you know, things from God. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We're going to read the Bible passage that we have for tonight from Hebrews 11, 1 to 19. Hebrews 11, 1 to 19. The Bible says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It says this is what the ancient were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Bible says what is seen, it was not made from what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. You know than Cain did. And it says by faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. You know, I will read the knowledge by a bit little and then explain. You know, if you look at the subject of faith, the Bible says faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You know, and he was saying this is, the, this is what the ancients were commended for. It means when you have faith, you receive commendation. When you have faith, you receive commendation. You know, in schools, it is only those that did excellently well that receive commendation. So in the kingdom, if you want to receive commendation, you cannot receive commendations if you don't have faith. If you really want to receive commendation, you must have faith. That was what the ancients were commended for. And the Bible says, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. It means faith has the capacity to bring the invisible to the visible realm. Faith has the capacity to bring the invisible to the visible realm. That you just speak word and everything will just be formed just by word of faith. So you have the power, you know, to use the word of faith to create your word from nothing. From nothing. From nothing. Everything about your life can just change if you can just have faith. And the Bible says in verse 4 that by faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. It means for you to even give your offering, you need faith. You don't just give your offering. You know, shabbily. You know, doubtfully, you need to have faith that this offering that you are giving will be acceptable. 
The Bible says, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speak, even though he is dead. So it means faith is so powerful that even when you are dead, you can still be speaking. <laughs> Look at what the scripture says. The Bible says that when God spoke well of his offering, and God says, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. So it's possible for you to be speaking by faith when you are dead. Can you imagine the dead, the dead bone of Elisha was this somehow speaking healing? Because when the dead man was dropped on this bone, the dead man rose up again, came back to life. So you're, you can still speak even though you're dead. <laughs> you know, if you want to look at it in our own world today, you know, at times, you just realize that you know, some word of faith that people have spoken in the past, even prior to maybe they've died long dead, people like Kenneth Egan and some of this father of faith, you know, or a robot. You still read some of these things and you see the words they carry that power, you know, the power of faith. Like this word that I'm speaking now and the messages I've preached so far recorded, people can still listen to it and it will still help their faith and they receive their healing even after I'm long gone. So that's, that's how powerful faith is, that you can still be speaking even though you're dead. You know? So the Bible says by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. You know, some people have done some imagin unimaginable things. You know, some people, even though God said that every one of us are going to die, right? According to the scripture. But some people escaped this world. <laughs> Escape death in this world by faith. People like uh, Enoch, people like Elijah, whom chariot of fire carried to heaven. You know, how can they carry chariot of fire, carry someone, and the person is not consumed? You know, faith. Faith. The Bible says about Enoch, the Bible says he could not be found because God had taken him away. God himself came for Enoch. He said, No, go, follow me. <laughs> he took him away. And he didn't see death by faith. God says, for before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, God says, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Can't you see that faith, you know, is required even for you to give your life to Jesus. For you to be qualified, to be called God's son. You know, you need to have faith. Because you have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Faith. Faith is very powerful. And verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Can you imagine what Noah did? During this period, there was no record that the world, you know, Will be destroyed, has been destroyed by water before. So he might choose not to believe, just like others chose not to believe. God might speak to him and he might choose not to believe. And it was recorded that he built this ark for several years. Do you know what it means to be consistently building the ark even when nobody is coming in? Even if, if, if even when everybody is jeering at him, saying, hey, look at this guy. You understand? When is your rain coming? You can imagine Year in, year out, nobody. You can imagine someone build a church today. And year in, year out, nobody is coming to the church. And you still believe, that you are still saying God call you. Many people are saying, you, say, ah, you better pack your load and go back home. You understand? <laughs> just be preaching. You understand? Just be preaching to your family. You understand? <laughs> you know? But faith, faith, faith will make you continue even in the face of nothing. Faith. That was what Noah did. Nobody is entering his ark. He built a beautiful ark. You know, human beings, even the animals, listen, and they, some entered. But human beings, you understand, apart from his family members, they refused to enter the ark. You can imagine someone building this kind of thing for years and expecting what God had said for several years. The Bible called him preacher of righteousness 
For several years, he was calling the people. People were cheering at him. They were marrying, giving a uh, hand, uh, hand of people in marriage. They did not believe what Noah was saying. But for Saul to be consistently doing the same thing, even when everybody is against him, it takes faith. It's not easy for you to be alone among the crowd. For you to hold, hold on tenaciously to your belief, even when everybody believes otherwise. It takes faith. That was what Noah did. He had faith that if God had promised that he's going to destroy the earth, even though he had never heard of anything like that before, yet he believed that there will be rain that will destroy the heart because of the sin of the world. Verse says, By faith, Abraham went caught to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. How can God call you and you don't know where you are going? And yet you move on. <laughs> it takes faith. You don't, you don't even know where you are going to. I believe that that must be the reason why the father led the journey. Say, so Abraham, you know, if you have a child today, you understand? Just think of it, you are a parent and you have a child today and your child walk up to you. Say, dad. He say, yes. Mom, yes. Say, God told me just to be going somewhere. You understand? <laughs> you know, because at times, you know, we don't reason this thing out very well. You know, one of your children just comes to you and say, Mom, I, you know, I just left and, you know, I had a powerful revelation. God told me to leave your house. And God told me to be going somewhere. I said, God, which God? He said, God of heaven. Where did the God tell you to go? I don't know. <laughs> You don't know. Yes, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to. But he just said, I should leave your house. And I should just be going. Ah, what are you going to say? He said, I bind and cast that devil in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> you will do some binding and casting. You will not even allow the child to go. He said, where are you going to? <laughs> where are you going to? You understand? Maybe because of the understanding that we have these days, maybe we can say, okay, go. You understand? But at this point in time, even the people that he's talking to, they were idolaters. They, they were idolater. they were, they were worshipping idols. There is no how they could believe him. You know, friends and relatives will ask, where are you going to? Many of them will say, you know, <laughs> you know how, how will he even raise with his friend? Everybody will be asking, where are you going to? I don't know. You know, the, the, the aspect that will be difficult, most difficult for Abraham was, I, I don't know how he convinced his wife. You understand? Because, you know, it is very rare for women to follow you when you don't know where you are going to. <laughs> you know, you must be able to define it and say, I'm going to such a place and then, okay, they will follow you. But you say, you talk to your wife and say, God told me to leave this place and go somewhere. And your wife will ask you, where are you going to? You say, I don't know. He just said I should be going. He will show me. Ah, you know, that was what Abraham did. By faith, so that you can understand what these people have done by faith. Because when God is telling us to move at times and we don't even understand where we are going to, most of the time, you know, <laughs> we, we don't obey because everything looks cloudy. You know, it's not clear. Not clear to us. Not clear to us. But it does not need to be clear to you. And that's where faith comes in. Once he has spoken, just do whatever he says. What God is saying might not make sense to you because, you know, you are limited in your thoughts. The Bible says it's thought. It's not our thought. That as far as heaven is from the earth, so is uh, thought higher than ours. His ways you know, are not our ways. So you, if you reason that way, you'll be able to know that no, if God gives you an instruction, you just follow. You just follow. Even when you don't know what it means, even when you don't understand fully. Just follow. Because most of the time, God will not give you the total picture. In the total picture. He did not tell Moses all the problems that he's going to face in the wilderness. Now, because if Moses had told the children of Israel that, look, when you get to the wilderness, there will be a time that you now have food to eat. There will be a time that there will be no water. There will be a time that you meet the Red Sea. And there will be army behind you. Who is going to follow Moses? Most likely, many of them will not follow him. He said, Moses, go alone. You know, 
Because by the time they met that same problem in the wilderness, what were they telling Moses? He said, let us go back to Egypt. We prefer to be slaves there and sit down with cucumber and garlic and be eating onions than to die in this wilderness. So it means if they had a premonition of that problem ahead of time, they wouldn't follow Moses. No. They will not follow Moses. They just stay where they are. So that's the reason why God don't show us everything. We know in path. And as we move on, it starts revealing other things to us. He will show you where you are going to. He will give you the picture of the destination. And that's why. God says when you are born again, you will do what? You will see the kingdom of God. You understand? There is one thing to see. There is another thing to enter. Because next time, he said, when you are born of the water and of the spirit, you will enter the kingdom of God. You can see and not enter. Moses saw, but he didn't enter. So there are two different things. So we shouldn't miss it. The first one said you will see. The second one said you will enter. Moses saw, but he didn't enter. He saw, his God showed him the place, but he did not enter. You can see a house, you understand, and don't enter the place. You can, <laughs> you understand, you can see. So when you don't enter, there are some things that you are missing. You only see the outward appearance, but you don't see even the meek and honey that is in the town. Moses did not experience it. He didn't taste all of the milk and honey in Canaan. But he saw afar off. He saw afar off. You will not only see your Canaan, you will enter your Canaan in Jesus' name. But why says by faith? No, I know, you know, uh, <laughs> look at what Moses, uh, Abraham did by faith. But he says by faith, Abraham went caught to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed, and went even though he did not know where he was going. And do you know the irony of it? Because at times you don't understand God fully. God promised Abraham the land of Canaan throughout his lifetime. He, didn't, he, he did not inherit the land of Canaan. Throughout his lifetime, he did not inherit the, the land of Canaan. Over 400 years later, you understand? That was when his descendant inherited the land. God kept on just promising, Abraham, I will give you this land. You know, Abraham died with that promise. He promised Isaac, I will give you this land. Isaac died with that promise. He promised Jacob, I will give you this land. Jacob did not inherit the land. He died with the promise. Joseph, all the children of Jacob, they died with the promise. It was hundred of years later, you understand, that his descendant, you know, now inherited the land. So just understand the way of God. The way of God is not a way. If God has spoken, it will come to pass. You understand? Some will come to pass in your lifetime, but most of the time it's not all the things that God say that come to pass in our lifetime. It, so it doesn't mean that they are lying. For all the prophets that prophesy about Jesus, many, of, many people will have called them liars because most of the things that they prophesy did not happen until they die. Say, so now unto us a child is born. Now unto us a son is given and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You understand? <laughs> you know, unto us a child is born. It, it looks as if the child is born now. You understand? If you look at that place. Well, the child was, was not born until Isaiah and many prophets died. You understand? Until they died and, and they were long gone. Hundred of years later, that was when the child was actually born. But when God was revealing to Isaiah, it looked as if, as if you know, the child is born. The spirit of the Lord is, uh, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good ideas. The way he even wrote that place, it looks as if he was writing about himself. If you read it, Said the spirit of the Lord is, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. You understand? If you look at it, it looks as if he was even talking about himself because the way the, the none that they were using there are personal pronoun. Personal. Yet he was prophesying about Jesus. About Jesus. About Jesus. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 9 that by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. I love Abraham. Even when he got to the promise land, I believe that ah, God, this cannot be the best that you promised me. You know, because if I just stay here, one day I will die. There must be a better promised land. This one must just be a kind of picture of the better one. You know? And 
you live like a stranger. When you live like a stranger somewhere, you are saying, no, the place is not your own. You are just passing through. Your treasure are laid off somewhere beyond the blues. You understand? So you just, you live, and that's the way to live. We're supposed to live like Father Abraham. If you live like a stranger, money, resources, everything, we mean nothing to you. They just be tool in your hand to accomplish God's assignment. Because you know that one day you are going to leave them and you cannot carry them along with you when you, die, when, you, when you die. If you say you have clothes, beautiful clothes, store a whole house with clothes. When you die, you cannot pick one with you. Maybe they will put one on you, but that one will not follow you to where you are going to. You understand? <laughs> it will not follow you to where you are going to. Yeah, naked you come, naked you go back. All the money, all the houses. I have 10 houses. Take them along when you die, if they are truly yours. I have 20 cars. Take them along when you die, if they are truly yours. You know, by the time you die, you realize that they are not really yours. <laughs> Some people will be fighting over the houses. You know, I pray that that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. You understand? Yeah. You know, your children will not fight over your houses. People will not fight over it. But what I'm saying is that that house is not truly yours. You are just a custodian. One day, some people will lay claim on them. Even those who are laying claim on them, one day they will leave them. They will still leave them. And that's why we shouldn't hold tenaciously to physical things, material things. We should lay our treasure in heaven. We should be particular about where our treasure is. It must be laid up in heaven rather than on heart. We are moth. You know, we destroy. Moth and worm. We destroy everything here. The Bible says this world will pass away. So all the riches and the glory of this world will pass away one day. One day. By faith, Abraham went called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance. The Bible says, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Verse 9 says, by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10 says, For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And thank God I look forward to that place, because he actually got there. That, the story of that rich man and Lazarus showed us that Abraham is actually <laughs> there, presently, in that city that he was looking forward to. And that's a better city to be. Verse 11 says, And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled. Faith has the capacity to enable you. Faith is an enabler. <laughs> Faith is what? An enabler. Verse 11 says, And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise Faith is an enabler. Faith is an enabler. You don't have the capacity to do that assignment as a student. You know, faith is an enabler. That course is too difficult for you. Faith is an enabler. Have faith that you can and you will. You are in your place of work. You are given some tasks to do. You don't understand how to do that task. Faith is an enabler. And Sarah was enabled. You understand? He was <laughs> the Bible says he, she was enabled to bear children, even though she was past child, child, the, the time of childbearing. You know, because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. That's the way to behave. All the promises of God, you know, you have the capacity can enable that word and make them tangible. You understand? Although the word of God is intangible, faith has the capacity to turn the intangible world to something tangible. You know, God was speaking. The word of God was intangible. Let there be light. But when the light came, the light was, and you can see the light. You understand? You can touch the animals. You can touch the human beings. They are tangible. You can touch the birds. But the world that brought them, you understand? The world was intangible. Faith is an enabler. 
You understand? You, it can bring, it can make intangible things tangible by faith. So the faith that Sarah had gave her the, <laughs> the capacity to carry baby in a womb that she considered as good as dead. The word of God, when that word was spoken to, to, to Sarah, the word gave her the ability, you know, to still continue to menstruate so that she could carry a baby. The eggs, listen, although the eggs were dead, faith has the capacity to revive that eggs. And that menopause that actually passed, you know, now started playing back. <laughs> you understand? When you pause something, you can actually play. You can play it back. You have the capacity to pause something, right? Faith can give you the capacity to play what has been paused. So that menopause, you know, <laughs> that they say it, it, it don't, they say it's, uh, some people say it is called menopause. It is not called menostop. Even when you stop it, you can still, <laughs> you can still bring it back. You have the capacity to do what you think you cannot do. Because faith makes impossible possible. And verse 12 says, and so from this, uh, and, and, and the Bible says, she was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Verse 12 says, and so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sun on the seashore. Verse 13 says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on heart. Verse 14 says, People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Verse 16 says, Instead, they were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So all these people, also they were looking for a better country by faith. Verse 17 says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. It takes faith for you to offer you know, your only son, that was what Abraham did, as a sacrifice. Well, it says, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God has said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from birth. These are things done by faith. Heroes of faith. So what is faith? <laughs> You know, introduction. Faith is all fundamental to Christian. It's fundamental to Christian creed and conduct for we are saved by faith. It is fundamental to Christian creed and conduct for we are saved by faith. Ephesians 2, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved. True faith. So, how are you saved? By grace, true faith. If anybody asks you, how are you sure that you are, you are saved? Tell them you are saved by grace. True faith. The grace, the grace is not your handiwork. The faith is your handiwork. So salvation is a partnership between man and God. God supplied the grace. You supply the faith. Salvation is what? A partnership between man and God. God supplies the grace. You supply the faith. Faith is, fun, you know, the Bible says in that Ephesians 2, 8, 
For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And that is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. The grace is not of yourself. But the faith is you. You have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead for you to be saved. And confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you have been saved. But you need the faith to acquire the salvation that God has given to you. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. <laughs> so, you can purchase salvation not with money, but with what? Faith. 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 It is free, but you still need to purchase it with faith. Because if you don't believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you cannot be saved. You cannot be saved. As Christ conversed with people and healed them, he looked for the characteristic of faith in each one. As Christ conversed with people and healed them, he looked for the characteristic of faith in each one. We are the Syrophoenician woman who showed persevering faith. The Syrophoenician woman showed persevering faith. Look at Mark 7.26. The Bible says, the woman was a Greek, born in Syria, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. She believed and God did. God drove out the demon. So, for you to receive healing from God, you need faith. You need faith. That woman said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made up. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and she was made whole. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She touched and she was made whole. Hallelujah. Also, we saw the centurion manifested a humble faith. The centurion manifested a humble faith. In Matthew 8, 8 to 10. Matthew 8, 8 to 10. The Bible says, the centurion replied, Lord, I do not desire to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. It means faith has no geographical barrier. When you have faith, you can have faith for someone that is in another country. And with your faith, your prayer of faith will reach that person. And that person can be made up. And that's why you can pray for someone across borders. And the prayer will still be answered. Even when you don't know that you are being prayed for, you don't need to know that you are being prayed for. You can pray for people silently and let them receive their healing silently without even knowing that you are the one that did the prayer. Peter did not know that the church was praying for him. He was expecting death. The Bible did not even rec record that he was praying. At least Paul and Silas, when they were in the prison, they did what? They prayed. They were expectant. They wanted to leave the prison. Joseph, when he was in the prison, was trying to lobby his way out. He didn't want to die in the prison. He told the chief butler, he said, when you get to the king, please mention my name and uh, get me out of this prison. Well, in case of Peter, he had given up. He was just expecting his death warrant. He was expecting error to bring him out and kill him. But some people were praying for him. Even though some of them did not even believe. Because when it eventually happened, they were saying it must be Peter Singer. How can you be praying and you don't believe what you are praying about? Because you cannot even, you know, it is difficult for you to receive from God when you pray a faithless prayer. But God still answered them. So look at here. Verse 9 of that Matthew 8 says, For um, I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go. And he goes. And that one come. And he comes. I say to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. This woman, or this man, this, who was a commander, you know, uh, uh, of army, you know, the centurion, he said he had soldiers under him. So it means you can speak Speak the word of faith. 
You can call anything to come by faith and that, that thing will come. You can test something to go by faith and that thing to go, we go. You can call forth your abundance. You can call forth your healing by faith. You can do the unimaginable by faith. Joseph spoke to Saul by faith. He spoke to Moon by faith and they listened. Moses will call frog and the frogs will listen. <laughs> Say, yes, sir. Where do you want us to go to? Go to Pharaoh's house and uh, at the house of the Egyptians. But make sure that you don't go to Goshen, where the children of Israel are. And the frog will say, yes, sir. Because we have the capacity to command. You know, they will command the, the sun to turn to lies and it will happen. They will command darkness and say, darkness, darkness. For three days, let there be darkness in Egypt. And those three days, you know, light here. <laughs> you know, they can command darkness. You don't understand. You can command nature by faith. Darkness will be in Egypt. And the people in the Goshen, they will have light. They can command anima to die. Anima. <laughs> they tell anima, die. But the animals in, in, in Israel don't die. And animals will say, yes, sir. And they will die. And the animals in Israel, they will stay alive. You can do the unthinkable through faith. <laughs> God said you can speak to mountain if you have faith like mustard seed. Mountain will move. We always sing that song. Every high thing must come down. Every you are the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Then we always sing this song too. You move mountains. You call for us to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. I will stand in it only because you made a way. You understand? God said, He's not the only one that can move mountain, right? You, you can move mountain. You can tell the mountain and say, Move. And the mountain will move. The mountain will move. The mountain will move if you have faith. And God was saying, when Jesus had this, that was what this centurion was saying. Said, if I tell this thing to go, it will go. one of the soldiers to go, they will go. If I tell them to come, he's telling you how to exercise your faith. Whatever you don't want, you can say, go. Seek to leave this aboard. Set and lose your grip over my children. You can command things and they will listen to you. Faith. Faith. Also, in the case of the blind man, the blind man showed an honest faith. The blind man showed an honest faith. Your healing is guaranteed to faith. Your promotion is guaranteed to, to faith. Look at it. Mark 10, 51. The Bible says, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. It means he had faith that Jesus can give him eyes although he was blind. Faith is so powerful. You can imagine what that lady that was under Naaman, the slave from Israel, that Naaman took, that was working with the mistress of uh, Naaman. She said assuredly that look, just go to that prophet and you receive your healing. You can imagine. <laughs> the lady committed the prophet. You can imagine if that prophet does not even have faith and now understand, he probably does not understand or did not understand the power that he had, that lady would have just got the prophet in trouble. Because the lady committed the prophet, you know, behind him. And even this lady too would have got herself into trouble. Because she was a slave. Anything would have happened if Nehemiah did not receive his healing. You know, he would have said, kill this slave. He would have said, discipline this slave. You, just, you are just tossing me up and down. So, you know, her life was on the line <laughs> by that suggestion. But she had faith that if Naaman can just go to the man of God and obey whatever the man of God 
it says that Nehemiah will receive his healing. And that was exactly what happened. So the blind man showed an honest faith. You know, he believed that God has the creative power to create eyes where there was no eyes. Also, Daniel manifested a daring faith. Daniel manifested a daring faith in the book of Daniel. Look at what he did in that book. It says, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then this man went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in, according, in accordance with the law of the medes and passions, which cannot be repeated. What are we saying here? You know, how many of you <laughs> will be able to go against the law of the land when it means that you could actually lose your life for it. You must have faith in the God that you're actually worshipping, you're according to. That they will make laws in the land and you will go against that law and say no. And say no. And stand your ground. And stand your ground. It takes faith. Because you can be severely punished you can be severely punished. And the Bible says, Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of, of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, verse 13, said, Your majesty, or to the decree you put in, you put in writing, he still prays three times a day. And when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort on the son than to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king, to king Darius and said to him, Remember your majesty that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. Can you imagine? They plotted against Daniel. But Daniel believed that God has the capacity to deliver him from the lion's mouth. From the lions. Even the king, <laughs> the king who was Actually, an unbeliever. He also believed because he went to that lion's den, you know, at the entrance to call on Daniel. You know, the following morning, he said, "As the God that you serve, be able to save you from the lions." And Daniel said, "God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth." You know, know the story. You know the story. So, by faith, you can do all this. You can actually go against the law of the land that is against the law of God by faith. You will be punished for it, but God has the capacity to rescue you. And some people are even ready. They said, look, if God is not going to rescue us from the fire, the tribus, they said they will still not worship, <laughs> they still not worship the idol that the king fashioned. And they were ready to die in the fire for their belief in God. Faith. Faith is confidence in God that leads us to believe his word. The only Bible. Faith is confidence in God that leads us to believe his word. The only Bible. By faith we receive Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior and confess him to the world. By faith. By faith. So what are the definitions of faith? Dictionary. The Bible says faith is belief. Trust. Fidelity or loyalty to a creed or religion. Faith is belief, trust, fidelity or loyalty to a creed or religion. And when it comes to the Bible, the Bible says in that Hebrews 11 one, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith has to do with now. And as Christians, if you don't have faith, you cannot please God. You cannot please God. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name.
relax and without looking, he placed her whole weight on a chair. Faith says, we're not for. You know, some of us are sitting on a chair. Some of us, we are living in a house. Even when we don't, we don't even know when we are building the house. You believe that you can stay in the staircase and we believe that by staying under the house, the house will not collapse. If you believe that it's going to collapse, we'll not stay under it. <laughs> yes, even though we don't even know when they are building, we just have faith that everything is strong, everything is okay. You enter a plane without seeing the pilot. You don't know the pilot from Adam. You don't know when the pilot received the training. You just have faith that the pilot has the capacity to take you from one destination to another. So we all have some elements of faith. We have some element of faith. We sleep and we believe that we are going to wake up again because God has the capacity to sustain us. We plan for tomorrow. You know, believing that you know, God will take us or make us see tomorrow. Faith is simple enough for a child to fulfill but too sublime for the sage to comprehend. To comprehend it fully or explain satisfactorily. You know, you know children sheepishly believe in you. Children sheepishly believe in you. Whatever you tell them to do, they try to do it. They believe. They believe in you. But at times it is difficult for adults to have faith. Because they try to rationalize things with their brain. You know, you can say, Unsearchable you are the Lord. Unsearchable you are the Lord. Unsearchable, unsearchable, unsearchable you are the Lord. It's a God that you cannot comprehend. You understand? So faith is not a blind act of the soul. Faith in God rests upon the best of evidence. So the evidence is in in the infallible word of God. The evidence of things that we could not see. And the evidence is in the infallible word of God. The word of God can never fail. You know, it gave us a guarantee over his word that even if Heaven and earth pass away. It's not a little judge of his word. It go unfulfilled. So faith is trust in the God of the scriptures and in Jesus Christ whom he had sent. You have to believe the word of God and the word of God is actually Jesus. Jesus said, believe my father. Believe also in me. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. Anytime your heart is troubled is a sign of unbelief. Faith is trust in the God of the scriptures and in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Faith is believing in the word of God, even when we don't understand how that word will be fulfilled. Faith is believing in the word of God, even when we don't understand how that word will be fulfilled. The faith that saves is a personal trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are the necessities of faith? What are the necessities of faith? Look at Hebrew 11.6. The Bible says, and without faith, it is impossible. Impossible. When God says impossible, <laughs> it means impossible. So it is impossible. It means anything you do without faith is not pleasing to God. Anything. Anything. If you give without faith, it's not pleasing to God. If you preach without faith, it's not pleasing to God. <laughs> if you serve in the household of God without faith, it's not pleasing to God. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible. If you give your offering without faith, it mentioned the case of Cain and Abel, that Abel's offering was accepted because it gave him faith. If you give your offering without faith, it's not acceptable to God. Any service that you render in the household of God, Without this faith component, it's not acceptable to God. Because the Bible says in that Hebrews 11.6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. <laughs> what does that tell you? You can never get any reward from God. If you don't have it. And this one of this bottles some of the point I normally say. When you serve God, there is a reward for you. There is a reward for you here on earth. There is a reward for you in heaven. When Jesus Christ was telling his disciples, he told them about the earthly reward and the heavenly reward. So both, you cannot talk about heavenly reward alone, no. He said in this world, if you have left sisters, you have left brothers, you have left, you know, every t- friends, whatever you have left, he said in this world, you reap hundredfold. And in the world to come, eternal life. So when you serve God, when you come to God, there are earthly reward and there are heavenly reward. There are some things that are fringe benefit to you anytime you serve God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. What are those things? Clothes, shelter, money, promotion, good jobs, fine house, fine cars, yeah, beautiful wives, beautiful husband. All these things shall be added unto you. So there are some addition to you. Anytime you seek God. Anytime you seek God. There are things that we added to you. We don't seek God and just go to heaven alone. That's not, that's not, the, only, <laughs> that's not the only place. That's the ultimate. But it's not the only thing that we get by serving God. That was why, you know, Apostle Paul had to tell, you know, some people, some people you know, he said, if it is in, only in this world that you have hope, Say you are the most miserable among men. Please take note. He's not saying that you should not have hope in this world. But he's saying you should not have hope in this world only. So you have to read the Bible very well. He didn't say you should not have hope in this world. There are some things you can hope for in this world. Say if it is only in this world that you have hope, you are the most miserable among men. All he's just telling you is that don't have hope only in this world. <laughs> so that you don't be the most miserable among men. But there are things you hope for in this world. There are things that you have to see in this world. There are things that you have to enjoy in this world. But don't allow the things that you're going to enjoy in this world debar you from your heavenly reward. Because that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate. Lazarus did not enjoy things of this world. But he made heaven. He made heaven. It doesn't mean that he cannot live like Father Abraham who lived in affluence in this world and still made heaven. He can still live like Isaac who was rich in cattle, rich in everything. The Bible says he was wealthy. You understand? Yeah, very wealthy. You know, he can live like Jacob. He was rich in cattle, rich in all these things. I look at the gift that he gave to, to Esau. It, it, it runs to millions of dollars. You know? So you can be rich in this world. You can live in affluence in this world and still make heaven. But God is saying, the Bible is saying, if it's only in this world that you have hope, you are the most miserable among men. So, when the Bible was saying that, Hebrews 11, 6, say, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who, come, anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards. So there is a reward. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. It rewards you with good jobs. It rewards you with, youth with promotion. It rewards you with good children. Great children. It rewards you with finances, money. It rewards you with beautiful houses. It rewards you with beautiful children. So God has the capacity to reward you. So there can be no dealings with the invisible God without faith in his existence. We must believe that he exists, that he rewards men. This confidence is called faith. Faith. Faith is necessary to salvation. Look at Acts 16.31. The Bible says, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And your household. This was the jailer that wanted to kill himself when he saw Paul and Silas. Or when he saw that the prison doors had opened and all the chains had been loosed. He thought, 
he, he thought that they've actually run away. But he said, don't kill yourself. And they preached the word of God to him. And what they told him is that he should believe in the Lord Jesus and he will be saved. This belief is called what? Faith. Romans 10, 9 to 10. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart. Believe. Faith. That God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. You need faith to even come to Jesus, to become the sons of God. And if you want to enjoy the good things in, of life, you also need what? Faith. You need faith. Believe and be saved. So you need to exercise your faith. So what are the nature of faith? The nature of faith. There are two kinds of faith in regard to salvation. There are two kinds of faith. The first one is head belief. That is a knowledge of the historical Christ and a general acceptance of the Bible. A knowledge of the historical Christ and a general acceptance of the Bible. The other one is art belief. That is faith from the heart that causes the person to act on his faith. You know, you act on what you believe. So, the caution here is that we must base our faith in Christ and not faith in our own faith. So, true faith in Christ is believing to the extent of receiving Christ. John 1 says, Yet yeah, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. But what's the first criteria? You need to believe in, in his name. You need to receive him and you need to believe in what? In his name. Then he will give you a right to become the children of God. So when it comes to your salvation, it's a partnership between you and God. God had already done his part. It's only your part that is remaining. And that's why we preach the gospel to the lost. All we are telling them to do is that God has done his part. And we are telling them the path that God has done by dying for their sins. And we are telling them to do their path by believing that God raised Jesus from the dead so that they might be saved. So it's always a partnership. So when you are talking about good news, good news is all about telling the people the price that Jesus Christ paid for their sin so that they can be redeemed from their sin. And you are now telling them the path they need to play for them to claim their inheritance. There's always a path for you to play. There's always a path for you to play. Colossians 2, 6 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Neither knowledge nor assent is true faith. True faith involves appropriation. So faith is the soul leaping forth to embrace the Christ in whom it believes. And I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So tonight before we pray, so this is where we're going to stop tonight. we we'll continue from there next week. Before we pray tonight, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ and you're listening to me right now, I want to say that you want to surrender your totality to God. You want to give your all to Christ. I want you to say after me. You know, before you say after me, the book of Romans talk about a step that you need to take towards your salvation. And we have read it before. You have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and then you will be saved. So if you want to be saved tonight, I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I've sinned and come short of your glory. I'm not worthy to be called your son. But today I confess your sin. I, I confess my sin. And I turn to you, Lord. Have mercy on me. Purify me. Cleanse me. Give me the grace to live for you. Give me the grace to do your will. Thank you, Father. For we've prayed in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer, please send an email to Newbath at Bethel Kingdom Street Church. We love you. We want to groom you and follow up with you until you are matured in Christ. God bless you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus.
And tonight, I just asked like three questions. You can give examples of four kinds of faith. One example for each kind. And define faith in two ways. The dictionary and then the biblical faith. And then, how essential is faith? How essential is faith? Then, four. Distinguish between head and art belief. Distinguish between head and art belief. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. You can rise on your feet wherever you are and talk to God tonight. You know, there is a way you can pray to God that God will increase your faith. Faith has the capacity to increase. You can grow in faith. You know, as you have more knowledge, more revelation into the word of God, you can grow in faith. Because God says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Uh, but it is possible for you to read the scripture and don't understand. And that's why you need God. Say, God, increase my faith. He increase my faith. As I study your word, give me revelation into your word so that my faith can be boosted. We, you know, we have what we call faith booster. The word of God is faith booster. You know, the word of God can boost your faith. The word of God is an energy drink that gives you power to do what you think you cannot do. Because when you have faith in the word of God, you can do the unthinkable. You can do the unimaginable. You can do the, the unbelievable. Say, God, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith, Lord. Increase my faith, Lord. Malika po, maran talika shete. As I study your word, let my faith be boosted. Let my faith increase. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Malika po, rin talika shete. Ralika talika shete. Linde yesende wo. Rika katalika po. Father, increase my faith. God, increase my faith. Father, increase my faith. Father, increase my faith. God, increase my faith. Boost my faith, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let us exercise our faith tonight. That centurion said, he was a commander of army. He tells this soldier to go and the soldier goes. He tells this soldier to come and the soldier comes. He said, God should just speak a word. And then he said, his child will be healed. I want you to speak some word tonight. Whatever you want to come, tell that things to come, those things to come. Whatever you want to go, tell those things to go. Command right now. Malika Talika Shente. Reke Talika Po. Goodness and mercy. I command you to follow me. All the days of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that favor will come my way. I grow in favor with me and favor with God. In the mighty name of Jesus. All the men that you have assigned for my destiny. I call you to come in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that our path will cross in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will speak to you right now and you will connect with me in the mighty name of Jesus. All the air paths of destiny that you have reserved for me, Father, connect me with them, connect me with them, connect me with them. Malika Shante, Reke Talika Bo, Lika Talika Shante, Raka Talika Bo, Leke Talika Shante, Rika Talika Shante, Lika Bo, Lentelika shente, reke telika po malika talika shente, raka talika po malentelika shente, reke telika po malika talika shente, raka talika shente. If you are trusting God for job, call for job. Say the top job of this land. Start calling for me. I am attracted to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever vision or revelation or dream that God will show you, like He showed Pharaoh, I pray that God is showing you right now. I pray that my matter will matter to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray that I will start dining with kings and princes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Elevate me, promote me beyond my dreams. And beyond my imaginations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Malika po, my promotion, come my way. Malika po, my young talika shente, good jobs, come my way. In the mighty name of Jesus. The top job in the land belongs to me. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, my business grow. I call forth my customers, wherever you are. Come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Big, big businesses, let us start on my way. Wisdom for witty inventions, come my way in the mighty name of Jesus. Enlarge your coast also in this land as a church. Maraka, Talika, all those that you have destined to serve in better kingdoms, I command you, wherever you are, come in the mighty name of Jesus. Come, come, come. Lika, po, Malen, Talika, Shete, Reke, Talika, po. Whatever you don't want, start commanding them to go. Sickness, I command you, go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Poverty, go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lika, po, maranta, lika, shente. Unruly behavior in my children. Go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Leke, telika, po, mayan, talika, shanta. Raka, talika, shente. Thank you, Father. For we've prayed in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you thanks and praises for your word that you have sent to us tonight. I pray that this word will heal us from our diseases in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word elevate us. Let your word promote us. Let your word establish us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that I will be rooted in Christ and we shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to listen to the announcement tonight. And as we listen, you can give your tithe, give your offering, give your seed. Give generously, give bountifully. And as you do that, it shall come back to you. Good measure, praise and shaking together, running over in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Bye for now. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praises for giving us the capacity to give to you. As we have given to you, Father, let it come back to us. Good measure, praise and shaking together, running over in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's see time and harvest will not cease. As we have sown our seed, Father, let us get bountiful harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bless us mightily beyond our dreams, beyond our imaginations, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. For I've prayed in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for partaking in tonight's Bible study. If you have been blessed, share this link with as many as possible. Let others be blessed too. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. Click the notification bell for regular updates. That's always actually necessary for you to receive this word of faith. There's a way the word of God builds you. So you can listen to it over and over again and also share with friends. God bless you. And you can fellowship with us at Wednesday Night Mount View. Bethel Kingdom City Church, BKCC, is a church with a mandate to groom the true worshipers who will worship God in spirit and in truth. Our watchword, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we have no confidence in the flesh. Philippians 3.3 Our core values. We run our church and our daily activities based on these core values. This is our reality. R, righteousness. E, excellence. A, accountability. L, love. I, integrity. T, teachability. Y, yearning. Righteousness. In BKCC, we believe that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are justified, declared righteous because our sins have been cleansed by Jesus Christ. We believe that through faith in Christ Jesus, Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness. We live in this consciousness, that we are the righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Excellence In BKCC, we have a strong desire for excellence, and we set our goals with a solid plan and firm blueprints on how to achieve the goals. We also operate in the spirit of excellence, Daniel 6.3. Accountability in BKCC, we have the consciousness that in whatever we do, we are answerable to one another, our leaders, and ultimately to God. Hence, in our work ethics, we don't believe in eye service. We are willing to accept responsibility for our own actions and make amends where necessary. Ephesians 6, 5-9 Love In BKCC, we have a love for one another earnestly from a pure heart. We purify our souls by our obedience to the truth in God's word and his commands. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-5, 1 Peter 1, 22, 2 John 6. 
Integrity. In BKCC, one of our most valued virtues is integrity. We believe in being totally honest and truthful in every part of our lives. We ensure that our words and actions are trustworthy and reliable. Proverbs 11.3, Proverbs 12.22. Teachability. In BKCC, we are teachable. We have the desire to listen, learn, and apply the scriptures in every facet of our lives. We have the hunger to discover and grow and the willingness to learn, unlearn, and relearn where necessary. Proverbs 9.9 and Proverbs 4.5. Yearning. In BKCC, we are hungry and thirsty for more of God. We are insatiable when it comes to knowing more of God and the power of His resurrection. We just want to know God more intimately, love Him more passionately, and serve Him unreservedly. Matthew 5, 6 and Psalm 42, 1. To learn more about BKCC, connect with us via these channels. Website, www.bethelkingdomcitychurch.ca Facebook, Bethel Kingdom City Church YouTube, Bethel Kingdom City Church, Calgary Twitter, at BKCC underscore Calgary Instagram, at BKCC underscore Calgary Email, info at BethelKingdomCityChurch.ca Phone number, 1-587-700-6200 